Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us tonight. Welcome. Tonight's discussion we are going to have is going to carry over. You'll get the chance to learn about the Knowles Teaching Fellows Program and hear firsthand accounts of how it has positively impacted the teaching practice of six Knowles Fellows. As we move through the discussion, we encourage you to please use that Q&A box to hold or ask any questions you might have. You may receive an answer along the way, or you may wait because all answers or all questions will be answered at the Q&A session at the end. So if you don't have a response directly in the chat, don't worry, that means we might be saving your question until the end. So to start, I'm gonna introduce our presenters for the evening. So my name is Ali Webb and I'm super excited to serve as your host. I joined the Knowles community as a part of the 2014 cohort and I'm now a senior fellow, which means I've successfully completed the five-year program. I'm a ninth year math teacher at, at Columbus Alternative High School in Columbus, Ohio. Um, in addition to my teaching responsibilities, I serve as the advanced studies coordinator at my school, coordinating our AP and IB programs. And I'm also the math department chair. This year, I have the privilege of serving as a team two specialist, which means I get to work with the 2018 Knowles Fellows on developing their inquiry around equity, identity, and leadership. I'd also like to introduce my co-presenter, Jeff Rozelle. Jeff is the vice president of programs at Knowles. He started his career in education as a science teacher in Cincinnati, Ohio, go Ohio, where he developed a passion for teacher development that continued into his graduate work and ultimately led him to Knowles, which he's been a part of since 2013. Next, I'm gonna introduce our panelists. These wonderful people are here to answer your questions today. Um, so please give a little wave when I say your name. Ishra Ahmed is a 2017 Knowles Teaching Fellow. She's a sixth year math teacher at Expend, Expedi, oh, I'm gonna have this, Expeditionary <laughs> School for Community Leaders in Brooklyn, New York. She is currently a ninth grade team lead and her union leader, union chapter leader. Ishrat thoroughly enjoys advocating for equitable and sustainable working conditions in her school. She will begin her role as math director for the teaching experience for undergraduates in New York in partnership with Barnard College and the American Museum of Natural History this summer. Ishrat also is a part of the STEM Teacher Fellowship for Math for America based in New York. She enjoys spending time at the gym and consuming any Marvel content that she can get her hands on. Welcome, Ishra. Jesse Braxton is also a Knowles Senior Fellow like myself from the 2016 cohort. He is a sixth year chemistry teacher at Central High School in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He also works with the American Modeling Teachers Association to offer high quality professional development opportunities to science teachers including hosting a recent one week workshop to introduce teachers in the school district of Philadelphia to modeling instruction. Outside of school, he enjoys rock climbing, kayaking, learning new skills like woodworking and spending time with his partner, Kayla. Welcome, Jesse. Enya Granados is a 2018 fellow teaching fellow she is a fourth year biology teacher at Alabama Connections Academy, a tuition free online public school. Enya has most was most recently named the 2021 outstanding new biology teacher of the National Association of Biology Teachers. She is also her school's GSA co sponsor. She likes to knit, swim and cuddle with her chihuahua. Welcome Enya. Tom Snarky is a Knowles Senior Fellow from the 2016 cohort. After working as a math teacher and a special educator at Malden High School in Malden, Massachusetts for five years, Tom is beginning his sixth year as a math teacher at Light Ridge High School in Aldi, Virginia. 
He advises the Computer Science Honor Society at Lightbridge, where he also serves as on the Personalized Learning Committee. Outside of teaching, Tom loves poetry in all languages, including French and American Sign Language. He hosts an online poetry reading series called Performance Anxiety. He is also the author of a pamphlet of poems about teaching entitled Complete Sentence Sentences that is due to be published by Broken Sleep Books in July of 2022. Welcome, Tom. Last, we have Anthony Tadaldi a Knowles Senior Fellow who is also from the 2016 cohort. He is a seventh year chemistry teacher at Belleville High School in Belleville, Michigan. Anthony was, recently Anthony was named Chair of the Science Department. A large part of his role revolves around supporting new teachers in this building. Additionally, Anthony serves as an advisor for student council and the assistant director for school plays and musicals. He is the founder of the GSA at his school and mentors two beginning teachers. When he's not selling his soul to Belleville High School, he is building his relationship with his boyfriend, Bradley, and their dog, Ozzy. Welcome, Anthony. To begin tonight, Jeff will give a brief overview of Knowles and the Teaching Fellows Program. Thank you, Allie, and thanks to uh, all the wonderful panelists uh, for uh, joining us tonight. Uh, and thanks to uh, all the attendees. We hope that this is something that is useful and helps you learn about uh, this program that we're really proud to offer. Um, the Knowles Teacher Initiative was established by Janet and Harry Knowles in 1999 to as increase the number of math and science teachers in the United States and ultimately to improve math and science, science education in the US. At Knowles, we believe that teachers can and should be the primary agents of educational improvement. And this belief is woven throughout all aspects of the foundation's programming, including the Teaching Fellows Program that we're gonna talk about tonight. The Knowles Teaching Fellows Program was designed specifically to address challenges faced by new high school math and science teachers. The five-year program supports these new teachers in their efforts to first become good teachers and then to lead from the classroom. Each year we award approximately 35 fellowships to new math, chemistry, physics, and biology teachers who have outstanding content knowledge, are committed to becoming great teachers and possess potential to become the kinds of teacher leaders who make a difference in schools. Fellows receive uh, an array of benefits that are designed specifically to support new teachers and uh, emerging teacher leaders. Uh, those benefits uh, that are financial are, are offered via grants to cover expenses that are associated with purchasing classroom materials and engaging in professional development. Additionally, fellows are eligible to request funds to develop and execute leadership activities that have an impact beyond their own classroom. And I think tonight you'll have a chance to hear about some of those grants and what people have used those for. In addition to the grants, fellows uh, are eligible to receive stipends during the summer. These stipends can be used to support fellows financially during the summer months, allowing them to concentrate on reflecting on the past year, preparing for the upcoming year, um, attending to professional development, uh, rather than taking on a part-time job in the summer uh, as many teachers uh, are, need to do. Another benefit is that um, we surround fellows with mentors and coaches. We value the expertise and knowledge of skillful, experienced teachers. Um, our staff, uh, have well over 100 years of teaching experience, and we all view ourselves first and foremost uh, as teachers. Our staff regularly check in with fellows, support them as they plan or reflect on instruction, talk them through challenging professional dilemmas, and support them through personal challenges. In addition to staff, each team supports fellows with two or three veteran teachers. We call them team specialists. Allie talked about how she's um, doing that this year. Most of them with uh, many years of teaching experience, both as teachers and teacher leaders. And these specialists bring 
on the ground experience and credibility. They attend meetings with fellows, support fellows in their inquiry and provide counsel as master teachers. Fellows tap into a support network that now has grown over 450 teachers, uh, all of whom have been through the fellowship and are committed to improving math and science education. Uh, from in-person conversations that take place at meetings to virtual conversations that take place in our online community or over Zoom, support is always nearby for fellows from other, from other fellows. Uh, we do invest in bringing fellows together um, in pre-pandemic times and hopefully soon again, uh, three times a year, sometimes as an entire community and sometimes just as a cohort. And attendance at Knowles meetings is often cited by fellows as a main benefit of the program. It is a competitive fellowship and new math and science teachers must submit an online application to apply for the Knowles Teaching Fellowship. 2022 Knowles Teaching Fellows will be selected following a review of submitted applications and the completion of an interview process. And all that begins in January of 2022 and ends in May of 2022. Details about the application process can be found on our website at knowlesteachers.org backslash apply. I do want to outline the eligibility requirements for the fellowship. Uh, just for briefly, first, applicants must have earned uh, a degree or an equivalent of, to a degree in the content area that they're applying for, either math, biology, chemistry, or physics, by September 1st, 2022, so by the time the fellowship starts. Second, applicants will need to be state certified or licensed to teach math or science in a high school classroom by September 1st, 2022. And third, as I mentioned, this program is for new teachers. So applicants will need to be first or second year teachers in the fall of 2022. So we recognize even with these criteria, it's certainly possible that you're gonna have questions about your unique situation. We wanna make sure that you're able to confirm your eligibility before investing the time needed to apply for our fellowship. So if you have questions, um, please send your inquiry to apply at knowlesteachers.org and we will respond quickly and personally. And that email will be up again a little bit later. So with that, I'll turn it over to our wonderful panel. Thank you, Jeff, for that high level overview of the fellowship which included eligibility requirements, the application process, and all things Knowles. Um, and next we're gonna move to our panel so that you can hear from people that have gone through the fellowship uh, to get an idea of what that feels like. As we described in the overview, Knowles selects teaching fellows in cohorts. In what ways has your cohort been important to your experience as a fellow? I'm gonna first direct this question to three fellows on the panel who are from the same cohort, Anthony, Tom, and Jesse. Anthony, would you like to start? Sure, can we hear me? <clears throat> Good. Um, hi, I'm Anthony and two other fellows here are in the Amazing 26 cohort. No shade to any other cohort, but this is our over, I guess we just became senior fellows and we could talk more about that after. But um, I wanna say the biggest thing about just the, the whole idea of a cohort is just the connection. Um, in my beginning years of teaching, I kind of felt like I was kind of alone in my hallway and like, I didn't wanna uh, bother any of my colleagues with questions or concerns about teaching. And sometimes there's like this air about like, you're just supposed to know how to teach and, and that's it. Um, and the fact that I was able to be in a cohort with other teachers who were learning it just as I was, having the same troubleshooting issues, leaning on each other, making each other laugh, making us uh, supporting and uplifting each other, and then having something to look forward to outside of the school building um, really just added to my confidence and my enjoyment of the profession. So I know Tom and Jessica could speak more on that, um, but that was big for me is just having a, a network of people that I could connect with and um, grow with together. Yeah, I feel like that's super, that's so much of what I feel like we've gotten from the cohort experience. Um, and I remember feeling like Anthony mentioned, you know, in the beginning you have 
the people in your building who are there to support you and can help you with that really fine grained stuff that is specific to your context. But um, the ability to sort of zoom out and have those bigger question conversations around like, you know, what's our philosophy of teaching and what do we want? Um, you know, how do we want to show up in our classrooms and how do we want our students to feel like they can show up in our classrooms? Um, I felt you know, sometimes a little uncomfortable raising those conversations in my context, but Knowles created the space where that was not only like, you know, allowed, but it was part of the focus of our work um, and getting to know the people in the cohort um, that I was with kind of helped make that those conversations feel productive and like they were going uh, somewhere really helpful and and the relationships that came out of that too. Um, you know, we're senior fellows now, but like we're, we're going to have the group me for our cohort forever. I'm, I'm sure of that. Um, and so I really, really value that. Yeah, Anthony will make sure that that group me never dies, I am sure. Um, yeah, I, uh, my, one of the really valuable things about the cohort is really it's just a group of amazing people. Um, and I felt that way from the very beginning, you know, from the first time that we met each other, it just felt like I was in a room of um, really dedicated, really passionate, really intelligent people coming from all over the country um, but having a fairly common purpose, you know, in that we wanted to really provide high quality educational opportunities for our students um, and, and have a positive impact both in our classrooms and outside of our classrooms. Um, and it felt like a group of people who could do that uh, from, from the start. And that was such a special thing to get to connect with. And then, you know, anytime somebody has a question, and I've benefited from this many times, um, you can reach out to not only the people in your cohort, but people in other cohorts as well. It really is a national network. And chances are, if there's something that you are wrestling with as an early career teacher, somebody else in Knowles has wrestled with it before. And, uh, and so you have the opportunity to reach out, um, you know, both to the people that you're seeing a few times a year through your cohort, but also just to this big network. And I've gotten so many responses um, to difficulties that I was having that have been really helpful. Uh, and I know that's been true for lots and lots of people. Um, the other thing about it is that just getting to be with the cohort a couple of times a year is such a breath of fresh air. And it is really, um, it's really energizing. And the, you know, we meet once in the fall and once in the spring and once in the summer. And, uh, and I know, you know, you get, you get a little bit caught up in the day to day uh, when you're teaching. There's so many practical problems to figure out uh, in the moment. And taking uh, a few days to meet with the cohort is just such a great opportunity to get to zoom out a little bit and start to think about bigger picture things and connect with this really awesome group of people. And I know I, I always came back to my classroom with uh, renewed energy and focus and some new ideas for uh, things that I could do and wanted to try. And it has just kept my excitement about teaching alive in a way that I don't think would have happened without having access to this group of people. All right, wonderful, thank you. My next question, each year, Teaching fellows write grants to access Knowles funding for professional development and classroom materials. Can you tell us about a grant you submitted and how the benefit you accessed impacted your teaching practice? I'd like to first direct this to Jesse and then open it up to the rest of the panel. Yeah, so the grants have really been huge for me. Um, you know, after my first year teaching, I attended a uh, a, a workshop in modeling instruction in chemistry, which I know uh, I know Anthony is also a fan of, and maybe some others here have gotten access to modeling instruction. It's a it's a really fun, great way to teach. Um, and uh, modeling instruction, you know, I, I learned all these um, progressive teaching ideas when I was in grad school, but I didn't really know how to put them into practice. Um, and getting the opportunity to go spend I spent two weeks in Massachusetts learning modeling instruction. And I came away with that, um, knowing kind of how to be the teacher that I wanted to be or having a much better idea. You know, you know what, what do you do on Monday, right? I mean, that's the question that you always have to figure out. And, uh, and having spent a couple of weeks learning this really in-depth approach to teaching chemistry, I, I felt like I had an answer to that question that was really satisfying to me. Um, and so Knowles made that possible, right? And, you know, the Knowles grant 
paid for me to go to Massachusetts. I live in Philadelphia, so it was a little bit of a trip. Um, they paid my tuition to be there. They covered my expenses while I was there. Um, and that was really a career changing thing for me. I've gotten very deep into modeling instruction since then. Uh, I attended a second modeling workshop a couple summers later. And, uh, and then I actually recently this past year recruited a couple colleagues from my school to attend uh, a workshop leader training for people who were interested in becoming workshop leaders for uh, the American Modeling Teachers Association. Um, so I'm on my way to becoming a workshop leader. And then over the summer, I, I organized a week-long professional development that also was funded by Knowles. And so I, I wrote a leadership grant. Uh, you know, you'll know, you learn about the different kinds of grants that are available to people, but you know, you have a certain pot of money that's available for you to pursue your own professional development and also to buy classroom materials, both of which have been great for me. Um, but then you can also do this leadership grant uh, which is an opportunity to, to raise some money to um, affect not only your classroom, but other people as well. And so the leadership grant from Knowles allowed me to bring in expert facilitators from the American Modeling Teachers Association to, re to run a one week long workshop for teachers in the school district of Philadelphia. Um, and uh, normally attending a week long workshop would cost, you know, it's one of these ridiculous things where teachers have to pay to go to their own professional development. It's like you're taking time out of your, out of your life to get better at your job, but it costs you money. Um, and the funding from Knowles made it possible to make that training free um, for everybody in the school district. And then on top of that, there was COVID money available in the school district. So then they were able to actually pay people to attend the workshop. And, you know, that is very rare. Uh, that people can get paid to attend a one week workshop. And, and it really is, um, it's an awesome opportunity to learn this particular way of teaching. Uh, and I was really pleased to be able to offer that to about 30 of my colleagues in the school district and, um, and have them be paid, which you know is the way that it should be in the process. So uh, all of that was possible through Knowles, both through the grants and uh, lots of support that I got along the way from, uh, from TDs, the, the teacher development, professionals that are part of Knowles um, and, uh, and also, you know, members of my cohort that helped me think through every step along the way there. Awesome. Thank you, Jesse. Knowles invests quite a bit to bring fellows together three times a year once during the summer and twice during the school year. How have those meetings furthered your growth as a teacher? And can you talk about particular meeting highlights? I'm gonna pass this one to Enya first and then open it up. Hey, um, so I know folks have kind of talked about the meetings and especially like the beauty that is the cohort model. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit instead of about those amazing small um, meetings, instead talk about our bigger meeting that tends to happen in the summer, because um, that one just holds a really special place in my heart. So what's cool about that meeting is that's an opportunity for all of us um, across the cohorts to get together. And so it's a really cool um, time where like beginning new career teachers get to meet with folks who have been you know, teaching for uh, quite a few years then. And so, um, it, so it's a really cool experience in that way. Um, but the professional development that happens in those meetings, um, especially the summer one is really awesome because it's also, we actually call it summer conference now instead of summer meeting because fellows get to submit um, literally conference sessions and present them. And it's not just like this, submit this thing and then like go, you know, drown in the water by yourself or something. It's, uh, you know, supported throughout the whole entire process. If you want to propose an idea and do it, you can, and, you know, you could do a poster or you could like lead a whole like session. And so, um, it's a cool supportive space where you get to, uh, be a participant and learn from your other amazing fellows, um, but also have those leadership opportunities. And so, um, like I had gone to a summer meeting, went to this really amazing 
um, presentation that was specifically on like how to make biology more equitable, particularly for LGBTQ students. And then like a couple years later, fast forward, I had connected with, you know, that presenter and a couple of other folks, and we developed a curriculum uh, uh, around that topic. And now we got to like present it at summer meeting. And then that was kind of like our baby presentation. And now we have it submitted and accepted to present at a national conference. So it's just like such a cool opportunity to be with others, collaborate with others, learn from others, and also get to practice leadership in a really, you know, not high risk context. Um, and I also really like particularly at summer meeting to give everybody like a common experience. We uh, do a like summer book that we all read together. So we all get a book um, and we read it and kind of have discussions about it. And lately they've been books that are centered on equity. So it's been a really cool um, way for me to learn about how to be a much more like equitable or anti-racist teacher and literally like apply that into my practice and talk to others about like, well, what does that even mean in science? Or like, what does that mean as a STEM teacher? Like, how can I do that? Um, and so the meetings are just um, really great opportunities for that and have really made me a better teacher leader and just a better, more equitable and compassionate teacher in general. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you. So get my little wait time. Knowles hires staff who are all experienced teachers to work as coaches, mentors, and professional development facilitators for Knowles Fellows. The staff fellows work with the title of program officers for teacher development, but everyone calls them TDs. Can you tell us about one of your TDs and how they've supported you or influenced you. Tom, I'm gonna to pass this one to you first and then open it up. Sure, yeah, I think we've uh, sung the praises pretty extensively of the sort of horizontal uh, group that you're with, um, fellows in the program, senior fellows, um, but the TDs do a really, really um, amazing job just kind of playing every role that they need to for the fellows that they're working with. Um, so one, one virtue of the model, I think, is that um, through the course of the fellowship, you'll get to work with multiple TDs. Um, so some TDs in the first and second year, some TDs in, in later years. Um, and so it's a nice way to sort of have a sense of who's on staff at Knowles in a, in a sort of a broader way than just like the one contact person you have. Um, there's a rotation and you do get to kind of build relationships that, that you know, when you see the people at summer conference, you know their name, you know things about them, et cetera. Um, so that I think helps the community aspect. Um, and also I just think that TDs, um, really work hard to make themselves available to you when you're not in necessarily that meeting space. Um, so for example, I wanna shout out uh, Roseanne Rostock, who is one of our TDs um, who had the very tall task of how do you adapt uh, an inquiry cycle and professional development with you know COVID happening and thinking about us all adjusting our teaching practices to that. Um, and so Roseanne did a ton of stuff, not only to help us with sort of the nuts and bolts of like, you know, applying, like I applied to go to AP training um, and use the grant money for that. And she was supportive with that process, but also um, she spent so much time thinking with me and a group of um, my peers who were in like an inquiry group together. You might've heard that. I think we mentioned that phrase before where, you know, we were looking into aspects of our teaching that we want to think more deeply about. And um, we meet as a group outside of meeting times uh, to make that work happen. And Roseanne was kind of, at all of those meetings, first of all, but also helping us think constructively about, well, okay, what do you need right now? Like what, you know, your, what your inquiry goal as a second year teacher or something like that might be a little different than your inquiry goal as somebody who is doing remote learning for the first time ever in their life. Um, and so TDs uh, really, in my experience, they, they exhibit that flexibility and that responsiveness, um, but also just kind of are, are part and parcel of that, that fabric of, of the overall fellowship, like connecting you to, to helpful resources, making time to make sure that the work that you're doing uh, is connected to your practice and, and helps support you and your students. Um, and yeah, Roseanne does an amazing job, but every TD uh, does that and, and does that in spades. So they're wonderful people to work with and getting to know them is a real privilege as part of the Pellet Fellowship as well. Hi, can everyone hear me? Um, 
sorry, I'm in another fellowship space for a different organization that I actually a Knowles fellow just was here and said hi. Um, so I think that the relationship with your cohort is obviously so special and like the what happens with your TDs and your cohort is like, I don't know, it's magical. Um, somehow we you have multiple TDs per for each year. And so um, that feeling of everyone gets support and they're so organized and making sure like, hey, this month, this is your point person. And that person is going to send you so many emails just to say, how are you doing? And you don't have to respond to them, which is really nice. I found that out and I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I haven't responded to your emails. And they're like, no, this is just so you have that constant touch point um, to know you have support in the ether, right? Specifically at Knowles, but just to make sure in that day that you are so overwhelmed and you're like, can I do my job today? And then you see that email pop up and it's a greeting card from Kim, who is a TD. And he was like, oh man, okay. Like maybe it's gonna be okay today. Um, and that personal relationship that you build, um, you know, obviously they are so invested in making sure you are supported professionally, but there are also times that personal things come up and try to combat your professional life. Um, and so having somebody who has been a teacher has had those obstacles come up in some capacity in their life to say, am I making this right decision for these circumstances? Or can I, do I have the capacity to do X, Y, and Z? Um, and getting somebody outside of your school context to support you with that is so helpful because <laughs> they're not clouded with the like school is family or all these other things that happen in your school. Um, and again, their whole, they're only talking to you because their best interest is to support you. Um, and so it's really nice to know you always have somebody there who is rooting for you and is there to like troubleshoot what is best for you. Thank you both. The next question is, in what ways do you being a Knowles fellow, do you think that has impacted your students? That's a big question here in Knowles. So I'm gonna start with Anthony. Um, so I'm going to go back to something that I had men uh, mentioned before about confidence. So, um, again, teaching in the classroom, depending on your school building, depending on if like, cause when I started teaching, um, I had just moved to Michigan. So like, I'm originally from New York and I had just moved to yeah New York what the, <laughs> and Brooklyn, New York, no less. Um, and I had just moved to Michigan. So I didn't really know that many people, um, I only really know people from like my graduate program and you know they were busy with teaching as well so a lot of things that I was doing in my classroom like I kind of had to figure out for myself and so um as I got more into the fellowship and the workshops that they would do the questions or prompts that would come up would be questions that I should be asking myself but there was no space for that. So for example, I think Tom or Jesse mentioned this before, but um, increasing access to learning was like a big, big topic. And I think year three, and they had some really eye opening conversations that we we often should have, but like, maybe the space isn't there in schools to think about. So um, I think something that has helped contribute to my classroom are asking questions that don't normally get asked about what goes on in my classroom. And then furthermore, just um, building that confidence that I'm not alone in doing what I'm doing in the classroom. If if I am going to do a lesson or if uh, something comes up with a colleague, I could reach out to the entire fellowship. Even last week, um, I posted, we have like the website and I have a colleague who was just given a journalism class that she's never taught before. And I'm, I don't know if that's ever happened to anybody where you're given a class the day before school. I mean, that's got, that's unheard of, right? Um, and so I wanted to support her um, and I didn't, and, and so I just reached out to the Knowles community. I was like, hey, does anybody know of any journalism resources or does anybody teach anything like that? And so many people either private message me, private message me or reached out um, on the Knowles community to share some resources in which I shared with my colleague. And it just made our relationship better because I was looking out for her and it made me 
um, kind of like a, a good resource for her. Um, and it just kind of further boosts my confidence in the classroom. Like something that could be very shaky in the classroom is our confidence. And part of the confidence that comes in the classroom is being willing to ask for help. And so with leaning on Knowles and asking for help, that further on trickles down to my students and I build the confidence with them to ask for help and not be afraid to ask questions and, and talk about the power of connections there. So confidence and knowing how to ask for help came from Knowles. I think I'm a little bit of a walking commercial okay. for um, modeling instruction right now. Um, but, uh, but for sure, that is a huge way that my students have been impacted. Um, and, uh, it, and, it, and it dovetails really nicely with a lot of the stuff that we learn through the, the Knowles meetings as well. I know, you know er, early on uh, in, the, in the progression in Knowles, a lot of what we're focusing on is, you know, how do we, how do we make lessons that are really cognitively uh, demanding of students so that students actually have to be doing real thinking and real problem solving and, you know, not just memorizing and regurgitating. Um, and modeling instruction is very much along those lines as well. You know, how do you get students doing science, doing math, you know, not just memorizing the things that other people have figured out, but actually engaging in the process of figuring things out for themselves. And, um, and so, you know, there's been a lot of support for me to figure that out, both through Knowles and through modeling instruction. And my students are, I think, much better thinkers as a result. And they're much more engaged in class uh, than they would have been otherwise. And, uh, you know, last year, we were teaching virtually all year long. I was in a new school last year teaching virtually. And my students repeatedly said that they enjoyed the class, that they were getting a lot out of it. And under these very difficult circumstances in the middle of a pandemic, you know, um, I, 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 had, I had been given access to the resources that I needed to be able to run an engaging class that way. Um, and they really still, even though students couldn't actually be doing the hands-on work of chemistry, which let's be honest, like that's the most fun part of chemistry is like actually getting your hands on things and um, seeing what happens when you mix things together or whatever. Um, you know, they didn't have access to that, but they still were pretty engaged in the class and the process because they were engaged mentally. Um, and, uh, and so that, you know, that has really changed the way that I teach. Uh, and I mentioned this before, but you know, it, it gave me the practical knowledge to be the teacher that I always wanted to be. Um, and that has had a pretty big impact on my students and how they learn and how they think and how they engage every day. Tom, I saw you on mute. I don't want to cut you off. Oh, no, I think Jesse said it beautifully, which is just that like there's so many things that we learn that transfer so directly to our students' experiences. And you also see it. Like I think Jesse's ex examples of like student engagement and the feedback that you get from students that like, hey, that thing you did is better than that other thing you did before. Like that totally, it's a really great feeling, in fact, to like to to know that like, oh yeah, I've students have watched like this thing that we have attempted to do um, and sometimes often like communicated with them um, why we're doing it and what our goals are and things like that. Um, and that have that really pay off not only at the level of our practice, but like their experience in school. So that's, that's just so cool. Thank you. One of the prongs of the fellowship is leadership as well. And so then I think about this question about student impact, um, it goes farther than just your classroom. A lot of times teaching fellows take resources back and share them with colleagues, become involved in the professional learning in their building, become leaders in formal or informal ways. And so student impact can definitely reach outside of just the classroom space that you exist. Last question of our designed questions, and then we're gonna move into our question and answer. So. For our viewers, if you have anything that's bubbling up, make sure that gets you know thrown in that question and answer. But we have one more question for them. Why do you think new teachers should apply for a Knowles Teaching Fellowship? Ishra, I am going to start with you. I mean, if we haven't convinced you yet, um, I would say that something about teaching that I didn't anticipate before entering the field is it's a like deeply personal job. Like the work that you do with a student, you share with another teacher because right, they're gonna go from your classroom to another classroom. 
Um, and so something that I think is so important is this whole network of support, right? And it's really special tiered level of support where you have RTDs who have been teachers and now are working with teachers. You have senior fellows, you have people who are a little farther along in their fellowship or people who were just in the same place as you the year before. Um, and so in that first year, when you're so just like, what is everything? Do I even have a key to the bathroom, right? Like things like that, sure, we can get our principals and folks at our school to help out with, but the like, what am I doing the right thing? Is this like, what's going on? What did I get myself into? It's really nice to have so many people to talk to that. Um, to talk about that with. Um, we have people who have had different careers and are now teachers. Um, and so even getting the opportunity to talk to somebody who has those connections is really cool. Um, but again, the like social support is really special too. Telling your principal you have to leave your school building because somebody is making you and is going to fly you somewhere else is really nice your first year because you can get so stuck that you are there too late. Um, again, I will advocate for workers' rights till uh, my dying day, but like the feeling of somebody telling you, hey, you matter a lot and what you're choosing to do as a profession is really important. And so getting that validation really early on in your career, in addition to the network of people who are like, you can do this is extremely important. And I think teaching again it's it's hard and so having so many people that say you are like you're really valuable to our profession and we want you to last in our profession is really important to hear so that's that's my pitch Um, I, I've said this to lots of people before, but I, I really believe that every new teacher in every field should have this kind of support. Um, it, teaching is a hard, complex job. Very few people are actually ready to be a great teacher in their first year. Um, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of preparation. And it really helps to have a lot of support to, to become the best teacher that you can be and provide the best learning opportunities for your students. And, um, and Knowles, you know, Knowles provides that in a way that um, very few people around the country actually get, um, get the level of support that they need. Uh, and, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to say that having Knowles made my first year teaching easy because it certainly wasn't, you know, it was still really challenging, a very difficult year. Um, but, uh, but I hate to imagine what it would have been like without the support of Knowles. <laughs> um, and, uh, and yeah, so I, you know, if, if we lived in a world that made any sense, right, like, uh, teachers all over the, all over the country would have several years of support to progress as teachers, as, as you're learning to do the job, um, rather than just kind of being thrown into the deep end and, you know, good luck, hope you can figure it out. Um, you know, and, and being a part of a community like this really changes the ball game. Thank you. I would agree. And I don't think it's an overstatement to say that Knowles entirely shaped who I am as a teacher, you know, with the underlying me being there, but hugely influential and the people that I've met through that program. I mean, it's just a game changer. So now we are going to go off script and read some questions. And so these will be to any panelists willing to kind of jump in and respond. Um, you might have seen them popping up in the Q&A, but I am going to allow people to think for maybe 30 seconds or so. So if you are trying to construct a question, now is a great time. Go ahead and drop that in that Q&A box.
Okay. So let's start with one of the questions I see here is how, when we were, when Jesse was talking, he was talking about, you know, the modeling and different conferences and professional learning that he was able to attend and to get access for, you know, the district at large. So for anyone involved um, in these types of external professional learning, how do you find these workshops? Um, do you learn about them as a Knowles Fellow or just seek them out by yourself or through other networks? How does that work? Um, for me with modeling, um, I learned about it from another Knowles Fellow. Uh, and uh, I know, you know, modeling lines pretty closely with uh, a lot of what we learn as Knowles Fellows. And so there's definitely a large contingent of people within Knowles who have also taken modeling workshops. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I was a first year teacher about to start in the classroom and I was at summer conference um, and really worried about what I was gonna do at the beginning of the year. Um, I, I was entering a school that had, it was a new school. They'd never had a chemistry teacher before. Um, and so there was no established curriculum and it was up to me to figure out what to do. And, uh, and that is not a position that you should be in as a first year teacher. And I was really worried about it. Um, and so I, I met somebody else who was a, a more experienced chemistry teacher a couple of years ahead of me in her career uh, at summer conference. And she was just like, I did this great thing called modeling instruction. Um, I can uh, you know, talk to you about it. I can share with you some of the curricular materials you should really do a workshop when you get the chance. Um, but, you know, this at least can be a starting point. Um, and, uh, and it was, you know, so, so that was, it was, it was a good starting point for me to have in my first year. And it was also really important for me to go and do that two week long workshop the following summer, because it, I would never have been able to totally wrap my head around it without that. Um, but yeah, that's how I found out about it was just by conversations with other people who had that experience before me. There's also a really massive spread. Oh, a really massive spreadsheet um, where people will say like, hey, I went to this conference, would recommend, here are some things to note. Um, and there are some times where I'm like, oh, you know what I could do? A conference or to feel inspired. Um, and so things like that, resources from fellows is really helpful. And it goes back from like a while too. Yeah, that spreadsheet is is worth its weight in gold, especially when you have something like like AP training, for example. There's it's offered all over the whole country. There's so many, um, so like you're like, what one do I go to? And the spreadsheet will give you, you know, really detailed, often um, accounts of what people's experiences were like in different sites. Like it was great here, I got lost here, or I didn't have any luck over here. You know, so that that piece is really super awesome. So whether you're just like looking for ideas or maybe you have something but there's like what do i do there's so many choices um but it's super useful as a resource um but also to jesse's point too like word of mouth is amazing because then you hear you know really what what people have done and what was rewarding and what translated really well to to their classes um and that's that's absolutely mint that kind of information thank you and I also think that Anthony, during one of his responses, touched on the online community that Knowles has that anyone can post. I went to this great training, Ch check it out. Here's the link. Um, or I have a question. Can I get some feedback? Um, and so that is a resource as well that people can tap into. The next question is, what is one thing you wish you knew about this fellowship before you applied? Something that I was really scared of this fellowship, especially as it got closer to selection um, or being in the selection process, uh, ours was in person back in 2017. And that feeling of like, wow, all of these educators are really amazing all around me. And that's really scary because I don't know anything. And like just this constant feeling of doubt um, that also like really transparently, I definitely felt as a woman of color in this space. Um, and so that was something that I was like, okay, and now if I get in, what's going to constantly be happening to me? Um, and I think that's like a very constant feeling that people of color have is you're like, oh man, what? how did this happen? Um, and something that's really been amazing for me in the past couple of years is getting to talk to my TDs about that and really talking about what the experience is like uh, as a person of color and 
them being super receptive to that. Um, in the past two years, they have been really responsive to our my cohort's needs of us being like, hey, we're a really diverse group uh, and we need a little bit more talk about X, Y, Z in terms of talking about race and identity and having them live react to it and say like, okay, how can we co-construct this right now was something that I didn't think was possible. Like Knowles, I sometimes I'm like, who who's doing all these things that are moving in all these parts? Um, it's such a well-oiled machine. And even watching them change in real time feels like a well-oiled machine. Um, and so knowing that like having that trust was something that I didn't think I fully had in my applied. I was really scared. Um, but knowing that they are they will they're down to listen. Like just because they've done it well for a long time doesn't mean that they don't believe in constantly changing for our changing world. I could add on um, one, one thing that I'm still figuring out in my, you know, I'm now a senior fellow, year six at this point, but um, there's, you know, what, when you become a Knowles Fellow, there's a fair amount of resource that is sent your way, but there's an awful lot that um, you need to be a little bit more active to take advantage of. Um, and there are some things that I wish I had taken advantage of better early in the fellowship for me, and in particular, um, building relationships with TDs. Um, I think I would have benefited from that more early in the fellowship. Um, and I, I didn't, it didn't really even occur to me as a thing to be intentional about um, until a year ago or two years ago or something like that. Um, but I really wish that I had um, reached out to, reached out to staff more often and said, hey, this is something that I'm struggling with. Can, can you jump on the phone with me? Um, and, uh, and have a quick conversation about it. Um, and in the last couple of years, that has been a really helpful thing to be able to do. Um, so I, I encourage people, you know, if, if you do become a Knowles Fellow, um, get a good understanding of the different types of resources that are available to you and um, be proactive about taking advantage of them. I would, um, I would like, oh, sorry, you go ahead. Okay, <laughs> um, I guess, um, I don't know what issue I was kind of helping me think about too, is that like, I think when I first was in Knowles and I still kind of do feel like this bit of like imposter syndrome, like, do I really belong here? I'm surrounded by amazing teachers, like what's going on? Oh my gosh. And like, this is such an amazing opportunity. And so I think it's no matter what, what point at what point in the process you get with the Knowles um, application process, whether you know you get to interview weekend, whether you get the phone call, whether you like actually get accepted into the fellowship, like just being yourself and being confident that like you were chosen for this and you made it to like X amount of step. And like, I mean, I'm sure if Knowles like had, you know, an endless pit of money they would love to do this for everybody and like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of teachers they would want to accept every 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 year but they can't so um I don't y'all are just like so important in doing the really hard work and so like you deserve to be a part of this and um you know just kind of like be okay with that accept that <laughs> Um, to add to that, I will say when uh, I applied for Knowles, I did not know what kind of impact it would have on who I am as a person. I thought it was just going to be maybe, I don't know, an extension of graduate school where we'd be reading things and maybe writing things. And I didn't know that there was going to be this responsive connection between fellows and TDs and other and finding people who are our senior fellows and making connections to where you are, I had no idea of how deep um, it would go. And over the last five or six years of this fellowship, I have definitely like elevated my identity. Um, I've thought about um, the spaces I take up and, and other spaces that are taken up. 
uh, things that I would never even imagine thinking about. Like I know this fellowship is for science and math teachers and I thought, okay, it's for STEM teachers. So we're just gonna be doing science and math things and, and learning how to engage our students in that. But it is so much more than that. So the, the purpose of this fellowship goes beyond just teaching. And it's more about who your identity is as a person and how that connects to your role as a teacher. Um, and so I didn't know how impactful this fellowship would be. And I wish if I would have known, I mean, I'm glad I didn't know that because the pressure would be even more on during the, the, the application process and the selection weekend. And I will say that unfortunately I have to go because I have to jump to another meeting. So um, I'm sure we'll have more things to say on this panel. Thank you all for being here tonight and um, I'm sure we'll have ways of connecting in the future. Thank you. Thank you all. So we have kind of two lingering questions yet left, but we, I don't know if we have time to address both of them. So I'm going to ask one person, if possible, to just give a little brief overview of what a cohort meeting might look like um, when you get there. I'd be happy to give a sort of overview. So um, our cohort meetings, like uh, like folks had mentioned previously, they happen, we get a cohort meeting in the fall and in the spring. Um, and usually the time in that cohort meeting is dedicated to, to kind of addressing a bunch of different aspects of the work um, in a ways that sort of spread out um, so that we can kind of process it all and, and have meaningful conversations at all. Um, part of that means that we might, for example, undergo some like professional development. So for example, I remember one of the really valuable experiences I had early on in the fellowship was learning about like how to make those, um, I think Jesse mentioned them earlier, like cognitively demanding tasks um, that were going to, you know, be rewarding for students to engage with. And then what instructional strategies um, could be used to give students access to those. Um, so you might spend some some time like experience like being in task mode and doing tasks uh, especially earlier on in the fellowship um, but then also some of the work time beyond that will be focused on the work as it applies to you um, your person and your um, classroom right so for example um, we mentioned the inquiry groups a few times where you will work on okay relative to the development that we're doing what's something I can pursue in my practice and experience growth in and gather data on data that I could share with um, other fellows and discuss and maybe learn something from. So there's some really thoughtful and intentional time devoted to figuring out how that's going to look um, for this particular inquiry cycle and also making a plan like between, for example, the fall meeting and the spring meeting, like, hey, how are we going to check in with each other? Um, how are we going to touch base and share data and have those discussions um, so that when spring meeting comes, we can kind of shift uh, gears or move to a different um, lens or phase or, or things like that. Um, and then there's also just lots of time as well to just get to know your cohort better and, and work um, with them in all these different capacities. So I especially feel like the parts of the meetings that I've gotten the most from are like check-in times where we're learning about what's sort of the living part of each other's context that's like really important um, for us to be thinking about and um, what, what things are like really living questions for people and for their students. Um, so it's a, it's a really... Um, diverse mix of over the course of like a weekend and it feels like you're you're sort of on for that time like I feel like you you use that time um very very carefully because you have such precious little time in person with each other or in a virtual space with each other um but but all of those meeting times again like Jesse said like I, I feel like I leave them with a whole bunch of ideas and also just that like great feeling of having seen a friend for the first time in a long while like when you leave you know, their house or something. And you're like, oh, it was, that was good. I'm glad I got to see them. And that, that's how leaving the cohort meetings feels for me. It's like, I'm glad I got to see this group of people who I care about and who care about me. And that's like, you know, indispensable, such an indispensable part of the experience, I think. Thank you. Yes, food for the soul. That's what a cohort meeting feels like. Um, all right, so we have to wrap up because we are, are out of time. I wanna show our Last slide here, just in case you didn't get to capture the contact information. Um, to learn more about the application process or to start your application, please visit this website here at the top, www.knowlesteachers.org apply. 
Additionally, more information about the fellowship can be found by visiting the event, events page on the Knowles website to view the recording of the August 24th fellowship webinar. If you have any questions that were not addressed, and I know there might've been a couple, um, feel free to contact Knowles via email for assistance. And that email is listed here at the bottom of the slide. We are so grateful for your time and attention. We hope that you all go for it and, and apply because it really is as valuable as you've heard everyone repeat many times tonight. Thank you so much. Have a great evening.